We've got a huge update for you today, and that comes in the form of native process and service monitoring. We've been working on this for some time, and we wanted to ensure that we delivered you one of the best implementations in the industry. So let's take a look at what that looks like. The first thing we did is take into account those MSPs with a ton of differing policies. We didn't want you to have to add the same processes and services across each policy one by one, which is why we allow you to group your processes or services into a single object that can be called directly from any policy. Let's take a look at process monitoring first. So the first section here is where we define what processes we want to monitor and what actions should be taken if the criteria here is met. Let's say we want a process constantly running on a particular group of assets. We'll use Dropbox as an example. The first option here tells your monitor to ignore this set of processes if there is no logged in user. This helps prevent false alarms for processes that only run when a user is logged in, like Dropbox. Next, you can set a delay before monitoring begins upon each system startup. This also helps prevent false alarms for processes that traditionally take a long time to spin up after a reboot. This is where you'll determine if you want to monitor for a process that is running or not running, and how long the process must be in the state before triggering an alert. This will help further fine-tune your alerts by ensuring things like app updates, which often shut down the process for a few minutes, don't inadvertently trip your monitor. One of our favorite things about our new implementation is that we didn't want you to spend time scripting things like starting or stopping processes. We've gone ahead and handled that for you. So I'm going to check this box here, which will start the process, in this case Dropbox, if it hasn't been running for the predetermined amount of time. By default, all processes are run as the logged in user. However, if you need to run a specific process as the system account, we've accounted for that too. Next, we'll set our file paths for when and if the process needs to be launched. Because it's possible you could have a mix of 32-bit and 64-bit assets on the same policy, we've added the ability to reference the appropriate file path based on the CPU architecture of each specific asset automatically. We also wanted to take into account situations where install paths may not always be the same across all of your assets, which is why the file paths you see here will accept the full gamut of Windows environment variables. Now you're not just limited to a single process, you can add as many as you want to the same monitor. Now we could have stopped there, but we really wanted to take our process and service monitoring to the next level. So we've added resource monitoring for each individual process contained within this monitor. If any single process breaches your desired thresholds for the desired amount of time, an alert will fire. Lastly, you can choose what type of response this monitor will take when it's tripped. You can have it write to the assets activity log, create an alert and write to the activity log, or you can choose to take no action at all. In some scenarios, you may just want to ensure a process stays running or not running, but you don't really much care about the alerts. So you have the flexibility to really do whatever you want here. And best of all, you can choose to auto-resolve your alerts. So if the monitor is tripped and on the next detection it no longer applies, the alert will automatically clear itself, ensuring you'll never be chasing down issues that no longer exist. For those instances where you may want to take action beyond just starting or stopping a process, you can employ our automated remediation. We've even made that as simple as possible by adding a button here that does it for you. Here you can automatically open tickets, run scripts, email internal or external staff, and even post the issue to your Slack channel if you wanted to. Now I did call this process and service monitoring, and our service monitoring works largely the same way as our process monitoring. You still have the ability to monitor as many services as you want within the same policy, monitor resource usage, choose your alert type, and trigger an automated remediation. We've also added the option to consider a disabled service as stopped so that you can ensure a service is always running regardless of the state it's found in. Finally, back on our asset policy, we can simply reference the monitor object we just created to enable the monitoring of any number of processors or services with a single action. Even better, you can add as many monitoring objects as you want to your asset policy. This will greatly reduce the work required to apply complex monitoring across a large number of different policies. So that's our new native process and service monitoring available starting today.